we need a, a new English translation because it's a new missal, a new edition of the missal that uh, Pope Paul VI published after the Second Vatican Council. Uh, that's the missal we're still using, but it's been revised twice. So we're using a 30-year-old translation of a 30-year-old missal when we've had a second edition in Latin and we never translated it in a way that was acceptable. Now we have a third edition. So what's new is uh, its content to some extent. There are some new canons, new prefaces, new prayers for newly canonized saints. And uh, we also have a new method of translating now that's slightly different from the method used 30 years ago. So there's a lot of novelty uh, in uh, what is a very old book. Catechesis is our reflection on the mysteries of faith. And so there's a catechesis necessary because the Mass is, first of all, a mystery of faith. It's not just a church rite that we make up. Uh, it is an action of the risen Christ, whose ways are mysterious. So it's Christ who acts in the Mass. He makes his self-sacrifice, his passion, death, resurrection, sacramentally present under the forms of bread and wine. It's he who is the actor. And we must start with that understanding, and that's a theological understanding, which isn't sometimes immediately evident to people who just walk into the church. This is Christ acting, because he acts through the priest, through the people. So the people have to understand that what they're doing is participating in an action of the risen Christ, and they have to be reminded of that. If we start with the rite itself, even with its history, with its words, uh, that's not a catechetical moment, that's an instruction, but it doesn't bring us into the mystery of faith. The uh, catechesis will start, therefore, with the theology of the Mass in the way that I mentioned. Uh, it will show that it, people, when they are participating in something that is Christ's action, are participating in something that's much bigger than what they're doing there. It brings us into the cosmos because the risen Christ is cosmic. It takes us out of the little community even if it's several thousand people that are visibly present to us, into the communion of saints. We celebrate the Mass in union with the Blessed Virgin, with all the saints who have gone before us, especially the martyrs, with also those who are with us on earth but aren't physically present, the Pope, perhaps the Bishop. So it's, it's a much wider reality because it is a mystery than the action itself would immediately uh, show people, you have to get behind the action, that's catechesis. And uh, we hope to take this moment of a new missal, new words, uh, of an old rite, to help people to understand again the depth of what's going on. The benefits are first of all spiritual, uh, but if we're spiritually renewed we have the courage to transform the world, which is what we're to do when we leave the celebration of the Mass and make the world a little bit more like the kingdom of God. Um, that kingdom is present in the, the Mass uh, in its fullness, but sacramentally, not visibly so. And uh, the benefits, therefore, for the laity are their own spiritual renewal and uh, in uh, the strength of the sanctity given them by Christ, uh, the ability to create good families, to uh, transform the workplace and the marketplace and uh, to prepare us now to do what we'll do forever, namely uh, be part of the heavenly litur liturgy where the risen Christ offers himself to the Father every day, every night, every moment because it's eternal and we'll be part of that then. We're part of it now in the sacrament and that prepares us uh, to be part of it for all eternity. When they translated the Missal of Paul VI uh, after the Council, they decided to use a method of translation called dynamic equivalence. And the idea was you translate meanings, but you separate the meanings from the words. The end result uh, can be accurate in one way, but it reduces the number of meanings that are in a text. So, for example, uh, in the third canon, the, role of the um, canon number three that we have now that emphasizes the work of the Holy Spirit. There is at the end of the first paragraph in what the priest is praying a reference to the prophet Malachi. 
where he talks about this sacrifice, which is celebrated around the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Well, the dynamic equivalent that we're using now is from east to west. Well, that's true, the rising of the sun to the setting from east to west. But it's prosaic. It not only doesn't capture the poetry, it doesn't capture the allusion to the prophet Malachi. So people will just say it and go on, and there are meanings that are lost. Although you can say it is a translation, but it's, it's flat. And they flattened out a lot of things in uh, that dynamic equivalence in order to make a, a translation that would be immediately understood. But scripture isn't immediately understood. And the scriptural passages that are the basis of liturgy shouldn't be immediately understood. If you think there's only one meaning there, you flattened it out in a way that leaves us without the richness of our faith being expressed liturgically. So the, the newer missal translation is something called formal equivalence. Not dynamic, not just the equivalent that way. But formal means that you don't just look for the meanings and put them into other words. You look for all the forms that are there and try to be not literal, as you can't be, but faithful to all the levels of meaning that are there. And so in the third Roman canon, we'll be saying from the rising of the sun to its setting, and a number of other places where the scripture allusions are immediate, we'll, you'll see them.